God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are all yours from the Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our sermon for today is the epistle lesson that was read to you earlier from the beginning words of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. My dear fellow believers in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> There's an emphasis today in America on personal freedoms. You know, people like to think that they're free to do whatever they want and whenever they feel like it. They emphasize their rights as individuals. Now, while that attitude may be the case in how our culture, our country operates, it is a devastating and a destructive attitude when it comes to the Christian faith and to our relationship with God. You see, to think that our relationship with God and with Jesus is just, just something between him and me individually, that's completely unbiblical. That is contrary to God's word. For again and again and again, the Bible teaches that those who believe in their Savior God are also placed into a family of God. And that they are brothers and sisters to their fellow believers. And this connection to other Christians, that this is a wonderfully positive blessing of God that we are to give thanks unto God for regularly. That is the message that is embedded in God's word before us today. As God tells us this for our sermon theme, thank God for your fellow Christians. And, <coughs> excuse me, there are two reasons why we are to thank God for our fellow Christians that are there in the word in front of us today. First of all, it's because God blesses them so much. And then the second point is that we thank God for our fellow Christians because they bless us so much. The Apostle Paul tells us what God has blessed your fellow Christians with because it's the exact same thing that he's blessed us with as individuals. And that is his grace. He says in our scripture, I always thank God for you because of God's grace given you in Christ Jesus. The undeserved love of Jesus Christ, you see, has been given to every Christian. Jesus is the greatest blessing of God because every Christian started life the same way that every person in this whole world started life, as a sinner, as an enemy of God, as a defiant rebel against God. See, you and I, we know that life, that we started life that way because the remnants of that evil mindset they're still there, still in our hearts, still in our minds. We have a sinful nature. We know how easy it is to lose control in our daily lives and how easy it is to lash out with angry words at someone. How easy it is to think the worst about those people that we associate with every day. Sin seems so natural to us because we were born that. But that's not what defines us anymore. And it's not what defines our fellow Christians anymore either. Our God has revealed Jesus Christ as the Redeemer, the Savior of sinners, and he's revealed that to all Christians. God has planted faith in Jesus into all Christians' hearts. And that's what makes Christians different people from the rest of the world. The same Apostle Paul says in his second letter to the Corinthians, if anybody is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. God blesses all Christians with the greatest gift of all, 
and that is the gift of faith in Christ. No Christian ever came up with the faith in Jesus on his own. Paul says later on in this same letter, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. All Christians in the world, wherever they live, all those who put their trust in Jesus, they really don't have a thing to do with coming up with that faith by their own power or strength. No, God gave it to them through the gospel. He gave it to them as a free gift. What a wonderful reason that is to thank God for our fellow Christians, that God has given them that same gift of faith that he gave us. And the result, well, the Apostle Paul talks about that here in our text. The result is that every Christian we see out there in this world is a saint. That means a holy person. That's what Paul says here in our scripture text today. He writes, to the church of God in Corinth, now note these words, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy. See, God doesn't make us into Christians because we're already holy. He calls us holy because we're Christians. By faith in Jesus, all Christians possess Christ's holiness. They have been washed clean in Christ's blood. And so when God looks at Christians, he doesn't see what we are in ourselves. He sees what we are in his son, Jesus. His perfection is given to us Christians just as if we had done it ourselves. This is a wonderful Bible comfort to us, just as it was to that Corinthian congregation. For you see, that congregation at Corinth was a very immature church. They fought with one another. They argued with each other. They refused to discipline one another. Plus, their worship life was chaotic. They were taking each other to court. In fact, they were even confused about some of the major doctrines of the faith. Those Christians at Corinth were a collection of baby Christians. And yet Paul still calls them saints in Christ as he begins his letter to them. So also the Christian church today in the world is in many ways like the church at Corinth. Quite often, Christians don't know the word very well. They fight with one another. They fall into grievous sins. They say and do sinful things to one another. And yet, through repentance, they receive Christ's forgiveness for those sins. And God now views them as saints, holy people, because they possess Christ's righteousness. They possess the forgiveness of their sins through their faith. That is a reason, you see, to thank God for all your fellow Christians that in spite of their weaknesses and in spite of their imperfections, look at how God views them in Christ as holy people. Now, this is true not just locally, but this is true all over the world. Did you catch that from the words of the Apostle Paul? He says, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So the church of Jesus Christ is everywhere here on this earth. Two words that we use for that truth are ecumenical and Catholic. Hmm? Both of these words simply mean worldwide or universal. See, we're not talking here about a denomination that uses that word. We're talking about the one universal body of Christians that exists for all time, all over the world. We call this the invisible Christian church, the communion of saints, huh? because it is faith that makes us a part of that church. The reason, that's the reason that the church is invisible to mankind. We are united in this one church 
with all Christians everywhere from all time, even with all those believers going back in the past, back to Adam, to Eve, it's true, we cannot see this oneness we have. It's by faith. But we believe in it as we confess in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. The universal ecumenical church is a reason for our gratitude. Thank God for your fellow Christians because God blesses them so much. But God's blessings upon all Christians in this world are more than just this gift of faith that gives eternal life. That's where it starts, huh? But with the gift of faith, God also gives all Christians other gifts. Spiritual gifts, they're called. The power of his grace to serve one another with that faith. And this too is a reason to give thanks to God for our fellow Christians. Paul refers to this in our scripture for today when he says, in Jesus Christ, you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge. God's Holy Spirit blesses our fellow Christians with unique and specialized talents and abilities that they can use to advance the kingdom of Christ. Now, all Christians are different from one another. And yet, every Christian has these unique spiritual gifts that they can use to serve one another in love. We see some of these gifts here at use, or at work, you might say here, at Shepherd of the Plains. Some Christians are great witnesses to God's word, and they can speak it clearly. Some are great teachers of God's word for all different age levels, especially for teaching that word to little children. Some Christians have fabulous musical abilities to sing, to play instruments, to lead others and to inspire others in this musical realm. Huh? Some Christians are just born leaders and born administrators. They can organize things, and they can get things done. Some Christians are just great encouragers. They are great cheerleaders, great huggers, right? Great counselors. Some Christians are great at getting service projects done, at working behind the scenes in support roles. Some Christians are great at computers and technology. On no. All Christians are gifted in their own unique ways, and they are reasons for us to thank God that he's given them to his church. And you know, that takes us to part two of our sermon, the second part, as we thank God for our fellow Christians. Not only do we rejoice in how God has blessed all Christians everywhere with faith and with spiritual gifts, that flow from that faith. But we also thank God for the fact that he blesses us personally through these Christians and through their gifts. Now we need to note this at first, that the spiritual gifts that Christians have and that the way that they use them are not to be used for their own glory. That issue was a problem there at Corinth. And that's why Paul speaks up about this right away at the beginning of his letter to them. He needed those Corinthians to, to take the focus off of themselves and to put it instead on Christ and to have those, those Corinthian Christians serve one another. Likewise, those being served in Corinth needed to look to their fellow Christians, look to them to be served by them, and not think that, well, they didn't need those gifts. They could do this Christianity on their own. This emphasis is still needed today. Far too many Christians are selfish in how they, they view their own Christian faith. They, they want to go it alone. They want to do self-Christianity. Do-it-yourself Christianity. 
And really, that attitude shows a lack of concern for the body of Christ, a lack of concern for their fellow Christians. God wants us to have a thankful attitude for the benefits that the church brings us, for how our fellow Christians serve us. And he wants us to take advantage of all those blessings that come to us through them. The very first blessing by which we're served by God's people is mentioned in the very first verse in our scripture text, when Paul says, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. In a sense, Paul is pulling rank here. He's calling attention to what he is by the will of God, and that is an apostle, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That meant God's own authority for those Christians in Corinth. You see, these Corinthian Christians had a lot of mixed up notions about their Christian faith. And the apostle Paul was God's own appointee to instruct them in Jesus and to remove these false ideas that they had. The apostle, all the apostles and their predecessors, the prophets of the Old Testament, they are the ones that God wants to give us through instruction in his word. Oh, the prophets and the apostles are all gone, but they've left words behind, the words of the Bible. And God wanted to bless those Corinthian Christians with a greater knowledge of and an application of his scriptures. It's the same for us Christians today. We thank God for our fellow Christians because it's through them that God instructs us in the apostolic and prophetic word. Those apostolic words have been given to the church to teach us. And God wants his people to use them to grow together to, with each other and to grow closer to him. This is why God wants us to gather as God's people in worship services every week. Why he wants us to get into Bible studies and into our own personal Bible reading. Why we have a tremendous need to speak the word of God to one another to build each other up and to listen to one another as we use the word of God jointly on a daily basis. Our fellow Christians bless us as we join together around the word and sacraments. No more greater need of seeing how that's important and in the last couple of years, where that has been a harder thing to do with the pandemic. This is why pastors and elders and all the Christians in the congregation reach out to those who are not participating in congregational life. We want them to receive their bless the blessings of the apostolic and prophetic words. Christians do not do their faith alone in a vacuum. Now, in addition to the apostolic word, our fellow Christians proclaim, God uses all those people with spiritual gifts that I mentioned earlier in the sermon to bless us in unique ways for that faith that we have in Christ. Um, those who serve, for example, behind the scenes, like an altar guild, who put out bread and wine to use in the Lord's Supper, or those who, who clean our facility and maintain our facility, those who repair our property, those leaders and administrators who keep records for our, for our church, huh? What blessings of God they are and how we need to thank them, huh? Or think of those in our congregation who lead us in other ways, who administer our affairs, who meet regularly to carry out our work. What a blessing they are to all of us. Some of our Christians are extremely generous. They have the ability and, are, and give large offerings of money in order to get the Lord's work done. What a blessing of God they are to thank God for. And I even hesitate to mention other specifics for fear I'll omit some important service of our saints here at Shepherd of the Plains. The point is simply this, that we are to thank God for one another Thank God for all the blessings that we receive from God's people who are responding to the grace of God that has been revealed to them. But even as we carry out our service, 
we need to remember it's all about Jesus Christ. Notice how the Apostle Paul points us that way in our text, at the end of our sermon text, when he says these words, God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful. See, even as we appreciate our fellow Christians, we still do so giving thanks to God for them. The focus is still on God and on his grace. You see, that is the neat thing about the doctrine of the Christian church. That the more we appreciate Jesus, the more we appreciate how Jesus blesses us through his people. Even if they're imperfect people. Because that's how grace works. Grace doesn't call attention to self. It calls attention to Jesus. May our God bless all of us with a greater appreciation for our fellow Christians. Yeah, I know, they'll never be perfect. In fact, sometimes our fellow Christians can downright drive us crazy. But God, in his grace, he isn't done with them yet. Just like he's not done with us yet either. And until we get to heaven, God's people possessing God's word are God's way of blessing us with his gospel grace. Thank God for your fellow Christians daily. Amen. And the peace of our God, it's beyond our human comprehension, will keep our hearts and our minds centered in on Jesus, our Savior and the Lord of our daily lives. Amen.